and welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, um, I want to review this book here um, called Asperger's Children, The Origins of Autism in Nazi Vienna by Edith Schaeffer. Um, so this book um, came out in the wake of the allegations that um, Hans Asperger, who gave his name to Asperger Syndrome, um, was implicated in the uh, Nazi regime in uh, 1930s uh, Vienna um, after the Nazi um, takeover of Vienna that um, Asperger kind of collaborated um, in in the regime and that he wasn't as compassionate as had been made out because the previous um, argument was that Hans Asperger was a heroic saviour of um, disabled children and that he protected them from the Nazis. But um, Edith Schaeffer, who's, a, who's a, histor a historian, an American historian, um, had done a lot of research actually uncover the unsavoury facts about um, what what was actually um, going on, and um, so I got this book. So I, I'm 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 interested in that period of history anyway. Well, obviously, I'm interested in um, autism anyway, as I'm autistic, and I'm interested in um, the sort of history of psychiatry. I find it interesting. I like history, and also um, I have a kind of like a um, a slightly personal. Um, element as well because my uh, grandmother who's dead now um, was actually um, actually survived the Nazi regime so um, came over to this country um, from Germany escaping the Nazis when she was 16 so um, yeah is that kind of like um, family background as well so you know it's kind of on a sort of personal level because obviously it's part of my family history as well so I find it all very interesting so that's why I, I went and got this book um, and so yeah so for blurb on a the cover then um, it says Hans Asperger the pioneer of autism and Asperger syndrome in Nazi Vienna has been celebrated for his compassionate defense of children with disabilities but in this groundbreaking book prize-winning historian Edith Schaeffer exposes that Asperger was not only involved in the racial policies of Hitler's Third Reich, he was complicit in the murder of children. As, as the Nazi regime slaughtered millions across Europe during World War II, it sorted people according to race, religion, behaviour and physical condition for either treatment or elimination. Nazi psychiatrists targeted children with different kinds of minds, especially those thought to lack social skills, claiming the Reich had no place for them. Asperger and his colleagues endeavoured to mould certain autistic children into productive citizens, while transferring others they deemed untreatable to Spiegelgrund, one of the Reich's deadliest child-killing centres. In the first comprehensive history of the links between autism and Nazism, Schaeffer uncovers how a diagnosis common today emerged from the atrocities of the Third Reich. With vivid storytelling and wide-ranging research, Asperger's children will move readers to rethink how societies assess, label and treat those diagnosed with disabilities. So that's um, just a blurb and um, it was published in 2018. So I do recommend, if you're interested in those areas, to, to read this book. It did make very harrowing reading, I have to say, but it was, it was interesting because it really put the diagnosis um, of autism into context. Um, so I took some notes, so I'm just going to go through my notes now. Um, so what I found most interesting, um, and what I got out from this book, I learned most from this book, because I wasn't aware of this before, um, is um, for, for, uh, it's something called Gemut, um, G-E-M-U-T, Gemut. Um, it's uh, a German word, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, but it's a German word, Gemut, um, meaning the capacity for social bonds. Um, it, Gemut first came 
uh, as a kind of concept, uh, Gemut first um, kind of came into being um, in the 18th century uh, to refer to soul, a person's soul, like a sort of like inner essence. But later on, the, the concept kind of morphed, it kind of mutated um, to mean um, a capacity for social bonds. And that was it, its main meaning um, in the 20th century. So um, even before uh, the Nazi, um, Nazis came to power in Germany um, in 1933, even before then, um, children... Um, were being diagnosed um, as having poor gemut. Um, it was actually a kind of a sort of diagnosis that a child lacked gemut, and then they were they, but this, then they were then um, seen as needing to be educated into developing social bonds because this was seen as a really important for for kind of sort of body politic. Um, it was all heavily focused on like collective spirits. This was even before the Nazis came to power. Um, and then certainly with the birth of fascism, um, you know, the sort of archetype, archetypal, archetype, is that word? Arch the prototypical, uh, when we think of fascism, we think of um, Mussolini, Mussolini. Um, and um, the, the, at the core of fascism, um, is uh, community spirit, like collective emotions, and um, sociability then became um, a category, a category of persecution. Um, so, so going back to um, to Asperger himself, um, on page forty six and throughout the book. Um, but it, uh, it describes how um, Hasberger had solid far-right wing credentials. Um, he held memberships in several anti-liberal and anti-Semitic organisations. So that's a fact um, that, you know, is, is inscribed in history. It's a fact we can't ignore. Um, and on page 58, talks about how uh, Hasberger um, kind of categorised children according to their so-called social worth. Uh, for example, in 1944, um, he said that useful special abilities made some autistic children superior, while others show automaton-like behaviour and have a crackpot interests which are of no practical use. So this is what Asperger himself actually said. It's quite shocking, really. Um, you know, crackpot interest, which I know practically is a horrible thing to say. So, but this this was very much part of eugenics. eugenics. Um, there, there are sort of two sides to eugenics. There are like positive eugenics, which um, for, uh, po it, it, positive eugenics um, argued that uh, certain uh, certain disabled children were uh, worthy of um, kind of like being redeemed, that they could be educated. So they kind of would separate disabled people into different categories ba um, based upon supposed um, social worth, based upon their utility to society. So some disabled people were seen as having more worth than others. Like, and, and I think that's like, you know, when we talk about like functioning today, high functioning, low functioning, a lot of that terminology actually does have its roots in eugenics eugenics um, eugenics theory and um, yeah like also like when you think of like say high grade low grade as they used to call um, inmates of um, asylums as well it does have quite a, an unsavory background so when we think about when we talk about um, the terms high functioning or low functioning we need to kind of like put it into that kind of historical context because these these words high functioning low functioning you know they, they don't they're not value free they have this history that we need to be aware of and that's part of the reason i think why we shouldn't be using these terms um so yeah so uh yeah so going back to that whole idea of gamut then so on page 67 the book talks about how um in in nazi society you had to feel and behave as part of a collective with social feeling, which was a condition of biosocial belonging, both racially and socially. So that's, that's the hallmark of fascist 
collectivism. And on page 69, it talks about how Nazi child psychiatrists use the term gamut to express ideas of social feeling. Um, so gamut being the fundamental capacity to form deep bonds with other people and essential to the worth as individual and health of the folk. So autism was actually a threat to fascism and that was why um, autism became such an area of obsession uh, for uh, psychiatrists around this time. The whole um, birth of the concept of autism came about in this particular era precisely because the type of person that was given the, the diagnosis autism. At this, point, at this point in time, by the way, the autism was given in a very loose way because they didn't yet have um, an exact criteria for it. So many different people, some of whom might not even be diagnosed autistic today, were given that label because they lacked so-called social feeling. Um, so that's why, you know, it wasn't an accident that the term autism came into being at this point of time in history. Um, in actual fact, the term autism originally was used to describe a symptom of schizophrenia. I think, um, uh, based upon my previous reading, it actually first came into being as a term itself in, um, I think it was 1911, 1912, that sort of time. Um, it, it was a, a symptom of schizophrenia, but it was later on that it came to be seen as a distinct condition in its own right. And it was during this period of history, which is when Nazi psychiatrists first started to use it to describe an actual condition um, of social detachment and they saw that as a, as a threat to society um, so yeah it's, 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 a, it's a direct inverse of fascism really um, you know the person anyone say um, not appearing warm and friendly not showing emotions or feelings or being overly intellectual um, was seen to be lacking gemut um, and so someone, for example, if you didn't have that many friends, for example, you might be lacking, seem to be lacking in Gemut. Um, so, yeah, so moving on to video number two now, where I'm going to carry on this review of um, Asperger's of Children. So moving on to video number two now.